This morning in our scripture reading, we, we were in First Peter chapter 5. Well, in our time in preparation for the Lord's Supper, we'll be looking at First Peter chapter 2. In a few minutes, we'll be drinking from a cup and eating a piece of bread as a reminder of the Lord's death. And this time in our service is reserved for those who are followers of Jesus Christ. And if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, my prayer is that you would listen closely together as we read from God's word. Um, But when the tray is passed in front of you, you can just let the tray pass to the person next to you without taking the cup. Um, But we're glad that you're here today. Um, But this time in our service is especially reserved for those who are followers of Christ. Well, in the book of 1 Peter, the Holy Spirit, through Peter, writes to believers who are being slandered, who are suffering unjustly, who are enduring harsh treatment, treatment that will soon grow into full-fledged persecution under Nero. And he writes to them to be firm in the faith, as we read this morning. In this context, Peter instructs believers how to interact with the world and how to love one another in the body of Christ. Earlier in chapter 1, verse 22, Peter said, Christian love for one another must be pure, it must be unhypocritical, and it must be genuine. Well, now in chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, he gives us further instruction for interacting with fellow believers. Let's read verses 1 through 3 together. Therefore, laying aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. Peter says we must crave the pure milk of the word, like newborn babies, We must crave God's word in a singularly focused way, like a newborn babe that will not grow without food. We will not grow in our spiritual lives without the nourishment of God's word. Peter actually connects our longing for God's word with our conduct in the body of Christ. What will work against an appetite for God's word? It's the love of self. If we regard our fellow believers with malice, ill will towards one another, if we are deceitful and hypocritical, if we put on a false pretense with one another, if we are envious, that is, we set our desires on what someone else has, and we speak against other believers, if we do those things, we will hinder our appetite for God's word. If we are to cultivate a proper love for Christ and his word so that we can grow. We must lay aside, as verse 1 says, these self-serving, self-preserving, self-glorifying, self-seeking attitudes. But when we have been cultivating a true longing for Christ's word, we experience the mighty working of God in our lives. Peter says in verse 3, look down, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, This this experience of the Lord's goodness through his word further fuels our continued longing for his word. God has designed his word to be a means by which he would disclose himself to us, by which he would show us his loving kindness, and the means by which he would actually cause us to grow. In verses 4 and 5, Peter switches to the imagery of a building. Now, spiritual growth is described as being built up. Verse 4. And coming to him as to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God, you also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. The the main verb of verses 4 and 5 is actually found in verse 5, with all believers, plural, being built up. Being built up is the main idea. Verse 4, then, 
describes that we are being built up while we continually come to the living stone of Jesus Christ. As we continue to come back to Jesus Christ as our reference point, the the pure milk of the word is what aligns us to Christ. We come to him for sustenance and strength and counsel and comfort, which he brings through the word and the spirit. And notice the identity of him to whom we keep coming in verse 4. Rejected by men, choice and precious. Jesus was rejected by men. He was hated by his own people. But he was choice and precious to his father who had predetermined to crush him as a sacrifice and as a payment for our sin. And he did that so that we could be made into a holy priesthood. And one sense in which believers are described as priests is that we have direct access to God. This is the reason we can come to him, as verse 4 says. We long to experience more of his kindness, to grow in him, to see him, to come under his authority. And as we long for and seek him in his word. Believer, do you long for Christ and his word in this way? As, as your greatest need, as the only food that will satisfy. Do you remember the privilege that we have with access to God that was purchased through the death of his son, Jesus Christ? For the believer, that which is choice and precious to God the Father, his son, Jesus Christ, is also precious to us. Verse 6, for this is contained in scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes upon him will not be put to shame. What a joy for believers to consider this truth this morning as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. But this truth also brings a sobering reality to those who do not trust in him. Because of Christ, believers can actually stand before him when Jesus Christ returns to judge sin. Because he has already paid the penalty of our sin. There is, in verse 6, no shame for those who believe in him. But for those who stumble over this living stone, the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Who reject him, who refuse to obey him. Both shame and judgment for every sin is coming. And please don't leave today without talking to someone about what it means to follow Christ, to put your faith in Christ alone for your salvation. Who longs to give eternal life in Christ, to forgive every sin of everyone who would come to him in faith. As you consider these truths, um, the men are going to come forward and they're going to pass the plates. Believer, rejoice in Christ as you consider these truths. And when your heart is prepared, go ahead and take communion on your own. And then I'll lead us in prayer.